Today we will start the discussion on matrices, matrix operations and uh, determinants. So let us get to matrices. So what are matrices? So visually we think of matrices as an arrangement of scalars. So what we think of is that if you want a matrix we represent it as some arrangement of scalars. So for example you could have you could have a matrix like 1, 3, 4, 1, 2, 2, 1, 3, 0, 2, minus 1, 7. So this is an arrangement of scalars and this is a this is referred to as a matrix. So we can say that matrix is an arrangement of scalars of scalars into rows and columns. So a matrix has to be in general a rectangular object. Okay. So you can also have what are called as square matrices. So a square matrix implies number of rows equal to number of columns. So now the notation we will use for a matrix. So notation for matrices, okay. if A denotes a matrix, A is a matrix, okay. it is denoted by an uh, rectangular array okay and i'll just i'll just start with it in general and then i'll just uh, explain to you what we are talking about so the elements of a are denoted as a little a 1 1 a 1 2 a 1 3 up to a 1 n the second row you start with a 2 1 a 2 2 a 2 3 up to a 2 m and you go all the way to the a n 1 a n 2 a n 3 all the way up to a n m okay so this matrix has n rows and m columns so we say this is an n by m matrix okay so this has n rows and m columns okay. and uh, this notation is very useful where we just denote the various elements okay so a i j is the element belonging to the ith row and jth column okay so we'll be following this notation throughout we'll use capital letters to denote matrices and uh, small letters with the subscripts to denote the appropriate elements of matrices needless to say for a square matrix has m equal to n so number of rows equal to number of columns Okay. So for a square matrix, so you typically have you denoted by A N N. Okay. So it's an N by N square matrix. Okay. So this is the basic of matrix. Now you can ask where is this useful and what are the properties of matrices. So let's look at some basic properties of matrices. So I'll just go through this very quickly because I'm sure many of you are familiar with these. So as far as addition and multiplication goes, okay. So uh, a which is a matrix and B which is also a matrix okay, can be added only if they have same number of rows and columns. So if you want to add two matrices, they should have the same dimensions. They should have the same number of rows and same number of columns. So um, if you had A plus B, if it was C, then I can write that uh, Aij plus Bij 
equal to Cij. This is a rule for rule for matrix addition. So what this means is that you have to add the elements term by term. That means that means you have to add the ijth element of A to the ijth element of B to get the ijth element of C. Okay. So if A is an A is an m by n matrix and B B should also be an m by n a matrix and C also is an m by n matrix. Okay. What about multiplication? So in multiplication, you you can multiply and m by k matrix with a k by n matrix to get a to get an m by n matrix. So, uh, what I want to say is that you can multiply two matrices only if the number of columns of the first matrix is equal to the number of rows of the second matrix. And the rule for uh, for matrix multiplication is that suppose I want to calculate c i j the i j th element of c then what I have to do is to sum over some uh, other index. I will just call it uh, L A I L B L J. Okay. So, I sum over all L okay, and L, L should go from 1 to K. Okay. So, uh, Again, again, I'm not, uh, I'm not doing this in all detail because I'm sure many of you are familiar. So, so if you have a matrix that looks like this, okay, and you have another matrix that looks like, like this, uh, where the number of rows here is equal to the number of columns here, okay. Then, when you multiply these, you will get a matrix that has uh, this many rows and this many columns. So, um, you you will get a matrix that has this many rows and this many columns. Okay. So, uh, so if this is if this is uh, M and this is K, this is K and this is N, then this is M and this is N. Okay. M by N matrix. Okay, and the way you get it is uh, you take the elements of the row and you multiply them by the elements of the column. Suppose I want to find find the the first element of this of this matrix. Okay, then I have to take the element of the first row and the first column of n and multiply first. First I multiply these two, then I multiply these two, then I multiply these two, and I go on and on. Then I multiply these two. And then I go, I go on and on till I reach the end. Okay, so so uh, you have to multiply them term by term. So so this element multiplies this element, this element multiplies this element, this element multiplies this element, and so on all the way up to the end. And when you do that, you when you add all of them up, you'll get this particular element. So so that's so much for addition and multiplication of matrices. There are a couple of other operations that you can do. One is called a transpose of a matrix. Okay. So, um, we will again, again we will restrict the discussion to square matrices. See, so that is m equal to n. So, suppose you have a matrix A, okay, which is a square matrix A, okay, and uh, A transpose is so 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 if this is a11 a12 up to a1n a21 a22 up to a2n an1 an2 up to ann okay then if this is a a transpose is given by by the matrix where the rows and columns are swapped so what you have is a11 a12 up to a1n a21 a22 up to a2n, an1, an2 up to ann. Okay, so that is a transpose. So I can write aij is uh, is your element of a. Then the corresponding element of a transpose is aji. So aij and ji are swapped in in a and a transpose. So when you go from A to A transpose, you are 
swapping the off diagonal elements. So diagonal elements are not affected because AII remains the same. Okay. The next thing is called the trace. So trace of a matrix again, again we will restrict to square matrix. So trace equal to sum of diagonal elements. Okay. So trace of A is equal to sum over I equal to 1 to N A I I. Okay. So, so uh, this is this uh, trace sometimes plays a role in uh, in various operations. So, these are some basic matrix operations. There are some other uh, useful operations or objects that are defined in, re in relation to matrix and this is a determinant. So, suppose you have again again only for square matrices, determinants are only defined for square matrices. So, so if you have a matrix A which is an n by n matrix, okay, then you can write determinant of A, okay, you can write it as, uh, as uh, in the following way. So, uh, what you will do is you will write it as A11 times write this as uh, what is called a cofactor of A11 plus A12 times cofactor of A12 plus dot 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 up to A, A, A1n times cofactor of A1n. Okay. I will just explain what this is. Okay. Uh, to, to motivate the determinant, okay, we can, uh, so, so, so I can, I can write this in general as A sum over I, A1i times cofactor of A1i. So, I will come to what the cofactor is, but uh, for uh, just to initiate the discussion, suppose you have a 3 by 3 matrix, suppose, uh, suppose you have A 3 by 3, okay. So, this is denoted by A11, A12, A13, A21, A22, A23, A31, A32, A33, okay. So, this is my matrix A. Okay. Then determinant of A is denoted by the same matrix with straight lines. So instead of uh, instead of uh, instead of the square brackets, you have straight lines. Okay. A one two, A one three, A two one, A two two, A two three, A three one, A three two, A three three, and this is equal to. I'll write it. I'll write it in three lines here. So, it is A11 times A22 into A33 minus A23 into A32 plus A12 into A23 into A31 minus A21 into A33 plus A13 into A21, A32 minus A31, A22. Okay. So, so it is a sum of 3 terms, okay. just as uh, you can see from this expression that it is a sum of 3 terms. Okay. Now, what, so how did we calculate the determinant? We multiplied this A11 by by what is called the cofactor which is nothing but this determinant. Okay. Then we multiplied A22 which I will show you the different color with this. So, you remove this row and this column. So, so, so if I imagine that I take out uh, this row and this column, okay, then I get, I get this determinant which starts with A, A23, A33, A21, A31 and so, and so I just, I just have the value of that determinant is A23 times A31 minus A21 times A33. Similarly, for A31, what I do is I remove this row and this column, okay, and I multiply it by this factor. So, so that is the basic idea of a determinant, okay, that you write it in terms of these cofactors. So, so just to remind, so cofactor of A11 is equal to A22 times 
a three three minus a three two times a two three. Okay, this is nothing but determinant of the matrix formed by removing this row and this column. So a two two, a two three, a three two, a three three. Okay, so this is the basic idea, and you can do this for larger matrices also. But you'll have to calculate more and more determinants. Okay, so so this cofactor is nothing but a determinant of a smaller matrix. So cofactor is the determinant of the matrix with. One row and one column removed. So now that uh, we have the idea of uh, of determinants, we can go ahead to the next operation. I'll I'll also mention one more thing that uh, if you look at if you look at any term in the determinant, okay, it'll have a product of product of Three, three of the elements of the matrix. So, for example, this term a one one times a two two times a two three is a product of a one one times a two two times a three three. The next term, which is a one one times a two three times a three two, is a product of this times this times this. So, each term in the determinant contains exactly one element from each row and each column. Okay. So there's exactly one element from each row in each column. You can never have a product that involves two elements from the same row or two elements from the same column. Okay, every product has one element from each row and one element from each column. I'll just make a note of this. Each term in determinant has has a product. Involving exactly one element from each row and each column, and this is again a very, very important fact to note that uh, you never have two elements from the same row multiplied in a determinant. Okay, in a in a determinant expression. Okay, the next operation for matrices. Okay, so this has to do with inverse, and in order to to define the inverse, again, again, this is only for square matrices. Okay, so in order to define the inverse, we define something called an identity identity matrix I. Okay, if you have an n by n matrix. Okay, so this is. The diagonal elements are one, and all the off-diagonal elements are zero. So all these, all the off-diagonal elements are zero. All the diagonal elements are one. Okay, so that's what that's what is called an identity matrix. Okay, and uh, identity matrix has a property that any matrix multiplied by the identity matrix. Okay. Gives you a, gives you the same matrix. That means, and 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 again, let's restrict to square matrices. So so let's take an n by n matrix, and you take an n by n matrix. Okay, you get a, just n by n. So an identity matrix is like the unit in multiplication. It's like one. So so any scalar multiplied by one gives you the same scalar. So any matrix multiplied by identity gives you the same matrix. So so it's like your one. Okay, and uh, so so now 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 you can ask, you can ask. Uh, suppose a times b equal to identity. Okay, then b is called inverse of a, and We can write b equal to a inverse. Okay, so in other words, a times a inverse is equal to identity 
which is also equal to a inverse times a okay again again it is not hard to show this okay but basically a times a inverse is identity and so now we have defined the inverse of a matrix this is inverse of matrix a okay so inverse of a square matrix is also a square matrix okay and again the matrix inverses are something that we end up using a lot matrix operation that i want to talk about is uh, that of row and column operations okay so uh, so so suppose you have a matrix a i'll just take a simple matrix a denoted by a11 a12 our usual matrix it should be a1n a21 a22 a23 and an1 an2 ann and i can do this for square or rectangular matrices okay now a row matrix so so a row operation is something like so suppose you take uh, r 2 plus c times r1 okay so what you what you mean by this is row 2 plus c times row 1 okay so and then you call this as uh, uh, row 2 is equal to row 2 plus c times row 1 so what you mean you will get a new matrix okay what does that new matrix looks like it looks like uh, it looks like uh, the so the first row is unchanged to the second row you add c times the first row and you have to do it element by element so what you do is this element becomes a21 plus c a11 okay similarly this element becomes a22 plus c a12 and the last element becomes a2n plus c a1n okay and uh, all the other elements remain unchanged okay so only row 2 is changed by this operation this is called a row operation you can do you can multiply any constant you can subtract and you can add two different rows and so on so this is called a row operation where you add add one row to another add a or, or you take linear combination of rows you can also have column operations so column operations can be similarly defined can be similarly operations can be similarly defined okay so for example if you have the same matrix a okay and so you have the same matrix a which is an n by n matrix and you do a column operation where you where let's say you do uh, you do c2 equal to c2 plus d times c1 okay so well, what does that mean that means that means you don't do anything to column 1 a11 a21 up to an1 but to column 2 you add d times column 1 so what you will get is a12 plus d a11 a2 a22 plus d a21 and all the way up to a n2 plus d a n1 okay and then all the other elements are unchanged all the other columns are unchanged okay so so what you did by this is by these row and column operations you get new matrices and uh, there are some interesting properties of these uh, row and column operations one of the things is that is that uh, when you do these row and column operations the determinant is unchanged so row and column operations leave determinant unchanged
okay okay you can show that row and column operations leave the determinant unchanged okay we'll we'll discuss some properties of determinants a little later okay but uh, we'll just keep in mind right now that when you do row and column operations then the determinant of the matrix is not changed okay thank you